Hello everyone and welcome back to the Obsessive Maker podcast. My name is Sian and today I'm going to try and do a one take episode and today's episode is all about my whips and what I'm going to decide to either keep or free up. So I planned on doing like a whip down type episode earlier in the year what are we now the 4th of feb already um and i'd honestly plan to do this halfway through jan but it has been a month like it's been one of those months really really busy really hectic um and so yes i just haven't got around to doing anything not only that is i haven't really had my space to myself because we've kind of been um packing up and sorting things out to sell and um, my husband has a wonderful Lego collection which I'm currently staring at on the other side of the room so I've had to <laughs> free up my dumping dumping ground so that he can actually put his Lego over there so that we can photograph it and sell it anyway <laughs> if I look a little sweaty it's because it, it's like I don't know I'm, I'm checking my watch to check the temperature it's like 38 degrees outside today and the wind is a really hot wind so I'm literally melting it's really hot in here too but we don't have aircon in this part of the house only in our main bedroom or down in the living area so I apologize if I look a little um, damp and misty um, but we're gonna get through this and you can either commiserate with me or celebrate on all of my whips. Honestly, I'm not sure what I'm at at this point. <laughs> it is a little overwhelming. And um, for those of you that watched along on sorting out my stash, um, you'll, you'll understand what I mean. And if you watched that, thank you so much for watching it. Um, I hope it made a lot of you feel a lot better about your own stashes. <laughs> um, I've certainly had that feedback from some, from some of you wonderful people commenting as well. So yes, so today we're actually going to tackle the whips and I'm going to share all of my knitting whips and all of my sewing whips, most of which I have to admit were put in the naughty corner and forgotten about or they just got fold it up and put away so that I could clear space for something else and again forgotten about so they've been neglected so my plan really for this year was to do a bit of a whip down I created a make nine which I haven't done for a few years only because I never really finished them um, but this year I thought I'm going to incorporate um, finishing some whips into my make nine and also doing some mending because I have a pile of mending over there that still needs to be addressed. I did a little reel yesterday where I set myself a timer for an hour and I just wanted to burn through getting some of that done. I got four things done including um, addressing the crotch curve on a pair of pants that I'd made for myself that were a little tight, a little bit too high up so I lowered that crotch curve. And I'm so glad I did because I've been procrastinating about that for ages and it literally took 15 minutes. Anyway, I am rambling, but I'm going to crack on and show you what I have had hanging over me for literally years. Some of these items have been in um, the uh, forgotten corner for five years. And I'm going to share that one with you first. And here she is. <clears throat> I just dropped part of her, but that's okay. This is, was supposed to be a Tamarack jacket hack into a bomber jacket. I bought this, I think one meter of this beautiful floral jacquard. Um, in a remnant sale I honestly can't tell you where um, and I thought you know what I can make a jacket out of it and it'll be fantastic to wear I got as far <laughs> as inserting the zip and literally all I have to do now 
all that's left to do is sew the zip in, attach the facing, and then sew the facing down. And finally is to attach the ribbing to the cuffs. Like literally, it could probably take me half an hour to finish, but you know, no, I put it, put it away, forgot about it, almost, almost gave it away. Um, but I think, I think I might come back to it. So this was one of those ones that I think I'm going to keep and finish. And even if it doesn't fit me any longer, I'm sure there'll be someone out there who would love an awesome floral bomber jacket with like champagne gold ribbing, uh, on the neck, hem and cuffs. So yes, so that's in the keep pile. The next thing Oh God, it's come off Tanger. Again, is one of those items that I pretty much finished 90% of. All I have to do with this one is insert the zipper into the back and hem the skirt. This is currently inside out. <laughs> it's currently inside out and the neckline may look familiar to you, so for those that are in the know, this is that famous Vogue pattern, that 70s style dress, and I think it is 9752, sorry, you are rocking on the boxes there. I've got you precariously set up on a couple of boxes on top of a stool. Um, anyway, it is the... <laughs> Uh, I'm just checking my Instagram. <laughs> it is the Vogue 9253. Vogue 9253. I have made it before. There we go. Ooh, just there we go. I made it in 2019 for Frogtails and I wore it and it's been a great dress. It's so easy to wear and I thought that I'd make myself another one in this uh kind of tropical print rayon there we go tropical print rayon from spotlight and again i just lost interest got to the zipper insertion and thought you know what um i can't be bothered right now also at the time i didn't have the right zipper so given that i'm so close to finishing this i think i'm gonna keep it and finish it because it'd be handy to have in this kind of hot weather Right, I'm going to show you a knit whip now. <laughs> um, I think I might alternate because then it makes it interesting, also keeps you on your toes because you may only be here for the sewing or you may only be here for the knit. But you know what? Sometimes it's nice to kind of have the variety. You may not sew, you may not be interested, you may not knit, but perhaps this is one of those opportunities where it can spark some interest for you. <laughs> right, here we have what you actually cannot make out, but this is a cotton um, Tolster tee by Crea Bea, Bea Knits. Um, I cast this on at the beginning of summer and I really wanted one of those eyelet tea versions that have shown up all over my Instagram feed and in Ravelry and I got into the swing of it but I realized I don't think I'm invested enough in the knit to deal with the eyelets. Um, I think I'd rather just knit a basic tea without the eyelets so I'm considering frogging it. I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, but I'm not that far into it. I haven't split four um, sleeves yet. So yeah, I think I might frog it. I will just say I am working with, um, oh, I don't have the ball band, but I'm working with the uh, Bendigo Woolen Mills uh, eight ply cotton. It's delicious. Like I've, been put off knitting with cotton previously because the ones I've knit with have been really kind of dry and crispy 
this is such a delight I can't get over how soft it is and um, yeah I would happily knit with this again I don't know what it's gonna wash up or block out to be um, like the texture but I'm enjoying working with it so uh, yeah this one what are we gonna do are we gonna free up or frog it frog it or continue what are we gonna do I'm not sure I think okay for the purposes of this video I'm gonna frog it and then I'm going to re-knit it that's what I'm gonna do okay moving on <laughs> what next oh here's another knit um, I started a while back I started the cathedral over I think it's called um, by I want to say unit or unit Toronto I'll put the, the name of it down here like I will with everything um, I started knitting it in this gorgeous Bendigo woolen mills for luxury four ply and this fantastic mohair almost a neon uh, minty green mohair by Melbourne City Dye Works. Um, it's called Crazy Crazy Iguana. Um, and I love the fabric. I love the fabric. But the pattern is bottom up. And I have to say, I got so, so bored that I think I'm ready to move on. I don't think I have, the, not the stamina, I don't think I have the interest to actually continue working on this project. I don't want it enough to actually finish it, but I do love the fabric. So I think I might frog this and use it for a different project that I'm more interested in right now. If you haven't figured out, I prefer top down. I like to roll with my level, high level of interest while I still have it. And then when things get boring, like finishing the body or the sleeves, I've done the beautiful part. So I have that motivation to finish it. Um, whereas if I'm doing a bottom up and it takes a while to get to the lovely kind of textured yoke, I lose interest. So <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of me top down all the way bottom up. I think I'll avoid that in the future unless I absolutely am obsessed with the pattern. So sadly, I'm not going to finish the cathedral tea or pullover. Sorry, cathedral pullover. I'm going to frog this baby and use the materials for something else. Next. Okay, I'm going to show you a toile or a muslin. Um, <laughs> this is a pair of, pair of pants that I was toiling. I think they are the Peppermint Magazine Wide Leg Pants. I was kind of on my pant making journey trying to overcome my frustration at trying to fit pants and I thought I'd just use fabric from Stash, knit up a toile or a muslin in um, the everyday, not the everyday pants, sorry, the Peppermint Wide Leg Pants because everyone was making them at the time and said they were fantastic and a great fit so I made them I made them um, I inserted the fly as well which actually quite successful so the instructions are pretty good um, I just haven't hemmed them but I completed them enough to realize that I think the pattern's not really for me it fits all right but I still have some decisions to make as to whether or not I actually want to make this a wearable toile or if I want to move on. So right now, in this moment, I'm going to put it in the finish pile because I feel like if I add a button and maybe play around with the back darts a little bit, I might like them. Yeah, I feel like there's too much fabric in the backside. And I think that's probably a mixture of it being a wide leg pant and also my body shape needing more more volume there in the hip. Um, but I'm going to see if I can overcome that by making some tweaks to some of the darts 
and I'll hem them and I'll try them out and then we will make a decision whether or not we keep it once we finish them. So I'm going to finish these. Moving on. Now I apologize if I say moving on quite a bit. Um, I'm leaning over to my hugely overburdened ironing board to grab this pile of freshly cut out and surged pattern pieces for what I think are the by hand London Jackie trousers. Again, this was in my trouser phase and it's a lovely linen. I got this in a D stash from someone who um, worked at uh, Tasuti Fabrics. Um, she was selling off some of her stash. Anyway, I cut all of the pieces out and I think I just lost confidence. It also requires uh, a little bit of lining um, and I just, yeah, I think I just wasn't confident. I lost interest. It all just seemed a little bit difficult for me at that time and I put it aside. So what I think I might do with this is perhaps not make the Jackie trousers. I need to check the sizing actually to see if I'm still the same size as when I cut it out. Um, but I might instead turn it into a pair of elastic waist pants. Um, the pattern itself has uh, some, I think some big pleats in the front. So I have a feeling that there may be some ease that I can utilize to make it elastic waist. We'll see. So I'm going to put this in the finished pile because I think it's got potential. <sighs> yeah, what next? Um, oh, I'm going to show you. I'm literally just dropping stuff everywhere. <laughs> um, this is a little bit of a failed, oh, sweaty, failed attempt at designing. I had one of my creative moments and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna design a pair of gloves for winter and I may still write the pattern for these, but um, I had some beautiful leftover neon yarn from my ranunculus and, oh God, I'm just putting on this glove, but, <laughs> but it's so hot. Um, okay, here we go. Now this may totally blow out, but these are my, um, what was I calling them? Tears in the rain gloves. I'm going to get out of the picture here so you can see it. I have designed these so that they appear a little bit like rain, but there's also some neon striping happening at the thumb. And I really like them, but I've come to a little bit of difficulty in uh, carrying on the color work uh, and completing the thumb. So I think I really kind of just need to rethink the design um, and have another go at them. So that's a me made, <laughs> me made a design by me. These are my Tears in the Rain uh, fingerless gloves inspired by, um, oh my God, I watched it the other day. Um, nope, it's gone. I'll put it up on screen. Anyway, it'll come to me later <laughs> when I'm editing this video, which hopefully won't be much editing, just inserting pictures and names. So yeah, I will pick that up and continue with that at some point. But um, with that, I was using a um, a ball of Regia Premium Cashmere fingering. And I was also using some of my leftover um, neon yellow fingering and mohair from my Ranunculus project. So. I think I'll definitely finish that. I'm not going to frog, well, I may frog the glove itself, but I think I'm definitely going to finish the process of writing up the pattern. Um, it's a really quick knit. It's just a little fiddly with the color work and it being summer, I didn't really want to work on it right now. So 
I'm definitely going to keep it and continue to work on it. What's next? Oh, let's bash out a few sewing ones, shall we? Um, I had a period where I was trying to make like useful things like bags and excuse me, um, and things like that and pouches. So what I have here is I think a Mary Mecco print fabric where I have attempted to make um, the, oh gosh, I've forgotten the name of the pattern, but Kylie and the Machine designed it. It's like a, a zipper fold over pouch. And I thought it'd be a fantastic little project bag. So I started that and honestly, I'm not far away from finishing it. So I'm definitely going to finish that one. Um, I can't get rid of it now. I've invested in it by putting some fusible buckram in there to stiffen it up. So that's some valuable material <laughs> and it's Mary Mecco. I mean, can't waste that. So I'm definitely going to finish that. <laughs> and then, oh, this is inside out and I, I'm not going to make it uh, right side out so that you can see it because it's just denim, but I will show you. This was a, I want to say a pinafore dress, a denim pinafore style sleeveless v-neck dress. If memory serves, it's one of the seam work patterns. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's one of the seam work magazine patterns. And I've invested again so, so much good materials and time into this that even if I don't utilize it as the dress, um, I may just split it into two separate garments and make a denim skirt out of the bottom half and make, I don't know, like a, <laughs> denim crop top to wear over sweaters for winter I don't know that's just kind of what I'm thinking at the moment but there's quite a bit of adjustment that I need to make in the bodice um, I had to shorten the bodice portion of it quite significantly so maybe I think I will work on this I think I'll work on it and see what happens um, but literally I just again just need to Get the fit right around the waist or the bust the under bust i should say um insert the zipper and hem it so again not a huge amount of work so i'm gonna finish this one i don't think we've got rid of any sewing ones yet so this is gonna be interesting <laughs> um oh and the next one I'm going to show you is a beautiful silk. Um, I wanted to make myself a gorgeous pair of silk pajamas. So I bought silk from, I think it was Pitt Trading at the time. It's this gorgeous kind of gray silk with tropical foliage printed on it. Oh, it's stunning. And I finished the shorts. I just need to insert elastic into the waistband oh and I actually do need to fold over the hems on the pants uh, on the legs but oh, it's so silky I mean of course it's silky it's silk it's so gorgeous I, I had given up hope of ever finishing this I think just because it was so fiddly and I had this fear of sewing with silk as well and it's just a mental hurdle that I haven't uh, have had difficulty getting over but I've got all the pattern pieces cut out I've already attached the collar to the shirt I just haven't attached the facings the sleeves um, the sleeve cuffs so it seems like such a shame for it all to go to waste so my guilt is suggesting that I should finish it so I think I'm gonna finish it <laughs> It's just, you know, the materials are just so gorgeous. I, I can't not finish it. And I think what I'm going to have to do is just set aside like a couple of hours just to bash through finishing some projects like I did with some of my mending because, yeah, there's some gorgeous things in there and so close, so close to the finish line. Um, yeah. So, and the Caroline pajamas are a lovely classic pajama pattern by Closet Cool Patterns. Um, 
Yeah, I do love closet closet core patterns. They do have some lovely, lovely designs. Anywho, I would love to sew up some of their other things, but I've got to finish these first, haven't I? Right, moving on. One more sewing because I'm trying to I'm trying to equally intersperse the knitting with the sewing because there aren't as many knitting as there are sewing. Um, swimwear. I cut out the Pilatus swimsuit by ooh, 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 I can't remember. Again, details at the bottom. I cut this out like several years ago. Um, everything's ready to go. I have even like done the pants. Uh, what I mean by done the pants is I've lined up the lining with the outer. All I have to do is stitch the sides and do some elastic. Um, so really I've done the hard bit. Ow, I stabbed myself. Ow. <laughs> I've done the hard bit by cutting it all out. I just need to finish it. So. I don't think it's a oops I just dropped everything on the floor um I don't think it's a pattern that I will wear because it has some cutouts in the back and a cutout in the front and um I may not feel confident wearing it but I think it might be an exercise that I do need to complete just for my own sanity um I made a swimsuit recently to wear in Singapore, which was the Sandpiper swimsuit. And I really liked that. Um, it's just that the waist was too high on the pants. So I have a feeling it'll be the same with these, but maybe that's an adjustment I can make. Um, but I've even gone so far as to attach some uh, lining to the bust um, so that I'm not, you know, exposing my nipples through the fabric if it's cold done it on both pieces there we go so again as much as i don't really want to complete this i think i probably should right moving on one sorry one that i think i'm not gonna finish is what these two are I have finished the project that they belong to, but I haven't, well, I haven't really finished the project. I finished it to the point where I'm happy to wear it as is, um, but what I haven't done is attach a few popper buttons to it. I'm not even telling you what the project is. <laughs> the project was my purple wool and cashmere bomber jacket um, for winter and I'll put a photo here and um, I lined it by hand so I didn't machine stitch the lining in and I got the back and the two front pieces of the lining in and these are actually the lining for the sleeves but I burnt out and I just I couldn't be bothered. I have no, in my, in my mind, I have no need for sleeve lining um, or for actually finishing the sleeves with lining. I think they're fine as they are. Um, it's 100% silk, this, and it's a um, Mark, I think it's a Mark Jacobs silk. I got it from the fabric store like eons ago. Um, it's beautiful and lightweight, but I've held on to these pieces just in case I change my mind. Um, I'm still going to hold on to them to make something else if I don't use them for their intended original purpose because um, it's gorgeous fabric but I don't think I'm going to line those sleeves yeah if you think otherwise if you think I should leave a comment below and give me some reasons create like a, a little proposal for me <laughs> that will convince me to line my sleeves but if you're like me and you're like nah can't be bothered then leave a comment as well good to know which side I'm on <laughs> so yes I'm not going to finish this so that is the one sewing thing that's going in the free up pile so far <laughs> okay moving on I have one two three other yarny projects in front of me have I covered the others one two three 
I think so. Um, first of all, this is one I'm definitely going to finish. I know I will um, because it's lovely. It's just been a bit too hot and I've had other projects on the go. But this is the Whitmore sweater and it's a gorgeous um, textured yoke and I just want to make sure I'm not going to drop any stitches. Where are my needles? There are my needles. Here we go. It's a beautiful textured yoke. It's going to look absolutely gorgeous and glorious when it's complete. So I'm definitely, definitely finishing this one. I'm knitting this one up in a Deep Stash Knit Picks palette in the colorway 9946. I think it's a sagebrush. I'm not sure if that's the color or if, yeah, I think that's the color actually. And I'm holding it together with some Lang Lace um, in the colorway. Oh God, I've forgotten that one too. I think it's something like um, agave. I remember it was like cactus related, so I think it's um, agave. So that is a definite finish. So once I've finished the yolk, the textured yolk, I think it should be pretty quick to kind of bang out the rest of it. Um, and that will be beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then another thing, another thing that I'm working on, which I literally just brought back from my knit group catch up with my knitting friends. Um, it is the, <laughs> Traveler Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And I am using my advent calendar from Little Woolly to knit this up. I am almost at the end of triangle one. I'm knitting the larger size. And as you can see, all my ne needles, all my stitches are scrunched up on my needles. But this is, this is how it's looking right now. It's lovely. Um, but I do have a beef to pick with the pattern. And to be honest, it might just be my poor reading and comprehension of it. I tend to skim things. So this may be my fault, in which case I'm sorry, Andrea, if it is. <laughs> but the only mention I see in the pattern of bind off, because what you're supposed to do is finish triangle one, bind off the edge, and then pick up for uh, on another edge for the next section. The only mention of bind off is a link to uh, how she binds off with eye cord edging at the very beginning of the pattern. And then in the schematic image in the back where she indicates to bind off, this is the schematic here. And it says bind off along there. But in the actual instructions, after, I won't show you the instructions because that's giving away the pattern for free. But after the instructions for triangle one, at the end of that, there's no mention of binding off. There's only moving straight into the second triangle. So I think it took me about half an hour to figure out that you're just supposed to figure it out yourself by the instructions in the schematic, sorry, the mention of binding off in the schematic. So I think what I'm going to do is just do what I think is right rather than follow some instructions and move on from there. Um, I have been enjoying the pattern so far. It's been a really good like advent project and it's interesting to kind of see those colors grow and change. Um, and I'm more than halfway through, so I'm definitely going to finish this one. So I'm putting that in the finish pile. And uh, one other knit, it's an ongoing one. So I'm, of course I'm going to finish it because it's one of those, I'm just resting some yarn under you. Um, <laughs> it's one of those ones that takes years. Um, sorry, it's not a knit, it's a crochet. And it is my scrappy crochet blanket. 
um, there we go. It's really wide. I've probably mentioned a hundred times that I was stupid and naive <laughs> to chain on so many bloody stitches. Anyway, it's going to take forever, but here is half, half the width. That's half the width. So it's big enough for a king size bed. And yeah, I'm just adding my scraps as I go. And when I finished with my advent project, the traveler shawl, I'm going to use the leftovers of that in this. And then uh, my knitty friend, Kath, um, who's also in our um, knit group and has her own, I was going to say channel, she has her own uh, Instagram, Mindful Melbourne Maker. She's been doing some yarn dyeing and she gave us each um, some of her yarn um, at our Christmas do and I wanted to use it for something special, not just my scrappy knit, but I haven't figured out what that's going to be yet. <sighs> Maybe I will use it in some mitts i love some fingerless gloves or maybe not socks because i'm not really a sock fan but i'll figure out what to use it in but for now it's sitting with this project in its basket um that's it for the knits or the yarny stuff but i have one, two, three other uh sewing projects which i well two i definitely will finish um this dress here is not made by me. This is one of those Daughters of India dresses, but there is a sewing pattern, which I've made before um, in the top version, called the Vali Top or Dress by Pattern Fantastic. It's a great pattern and I really need some floaty summer dresses. And I had this gorgeous um, fairy print cotton, uh, gauze in my stash this is actually the wrong side of the fabric but it's like a, a white and light blue pattern and i wanted to make a couple of vali dresses one out of this fabric and one out of some double gauze that i had in a creamy color with some gold raindrops i bought this fabric in Japan when we went pre-pandemic and I always thought I'd make a floaty dress with it so I definitely want to make the Bali dresses. I have these all cut out and ready to go I just need to sew them up so I'm definitely going to finish those <laughs> and um, finally I have to reach over. <laughs> finally I have had this little bundle cut out for, since 2019 this is a fanny pack um, again I can't remember the name <laughs> fennel fanny pack that's what it is I've got all the pieces cut out ready to go but I just haven't got round to actually piecing it together <sighs> I'm gonna finish it I'm definitely yeah I'm definitely gonna finish it and with that that ends the roundup of all of my whips, at least all of the ones that I can find and remember that I have. And now I feel like, <laughs> I feel like that person, that hoarder who's like, yeah, I'm going to let things go. I'm going to move on and, you know, only keep the things that I really want to keep. And then they end up just not getting rid of anything. But I don't know. Two things. I got rid of two things. The cathedral, what well, kind of three? The cathedral pullover, the lining, the sleeve linings for the jacket, and I'm gonna frog the Tolster tee with eyelets. So technically that's three, we'll count that as three, but I don't know. It's still a lot to get through, so I think I might just set myself a goal of trying to finish one a month, or like I said before, just have a blitz session where I just allocate myself an, an hour or two or three to finish a couple of projects just see what I can get done um, that worked really well for me yesterday with the mending so I think I'm definitely going to do that again so there we have it 
I have aired all my dirty laundry slash whips um, and I shared those with you and I hope you enjoyed seeing them. I know it was a little bit of a like fast ramble but I can't stay in this hot room any longer and I think you've seen enough. I could talk on and on about each and every item but you know what when I finish it and I can share it with you on a podcast I will go into every single detail you could possibly want to know. <laughs> But for now, I want to thank you again for joining me here at the Obsessive Makeup Podcast. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. And if you liked what you saw, I hope you'll consider subscribing um, and liking the video. And do feel free to comment. I try and respond to every single comment that anyone leaves. I have had a few kind of like weird ones, which I think are people just or bots or just mean people. But, you know that's life isn't it but everyone else has just been absolutely delightful in sharing their own experiences as well and if you don't read the comments please do go read the, the comments because there is a wealth of experience in my viewers as well and they all are wonderful people and love to share so please go and read those comments as well <sighs> have a wonderful day enjoy the rest of your week I don't know what day it is where you are. Well, it's Sunday here, so it must be, if you're watching somewhere else in the world, it's probably Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you soon. Thanks, bye.